Invigor Book and Buy ends November 14th. Run, don't walk to invigorbookandbuy.ca to find out how to get $30 off per bag. Terms and conditions apply. Sean Haney here with Real Agriculture, and we're in Hagler, Nebraska. We're at Black Shirt Feeders, and I'm joined right now by the oper operations manager is Trevor Thompson. Trevor, it's great to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you. <laughs> this is awesome, man. We just got the big tour, drove all around this, uh, this, this feed yard that is absolutely spectacular. Hey, we can't go any further without talking about the, the scale of what is being accomplished here. Still under construction, but as you can clearly see behind us, cattle on feed. So w give us an update where we're at. Yeah, so right now we've got about 73,000 head on feed. Um, our build capacity is just over 80,000. Um, by the end of the year, we'll be at 100,000 head capacity and probably around 90,000 head on feed. And it ultimately getting to 200? Yeah, so each year we're doing about 50,000 head increases. So by the end of next year, we should have... Uh, close to 150,000 head on feed, and then ultimately end of 2027, we'll have 200,000 head on feed. It is uh, amazing. Um, it is, uh, you know, there, there was a time where where uh, a 25,000 head feed yard was a, was a very large yard. What, obviously, this is breaking new ground. What kind of advantages does a feed yard of this size give the operation? Yeah, there's a lot of operational efficiencies. I mean, we've got our mill uh, right in the center of our of our feed lot, so we have the efficiencies of all the feed trucks going back and forth, less travel distance, um, making sure that all of our employees are, are stationed correctly throughout. Um, just the nice thing about building a, a greenfield site is you can build the feedlot to cater to the cattle, not buy the cattle that caters to the feedlot. Yeah, and, and being uh, very aware of the source of the cattle, plus at the same time, not farming, but bringing all, all of the feedstock is coming in from external, from surrounding farmers, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, I, uh, and talk about the mill a little bit from the steam flaking perspective and the capacity that you've built in here. The, the word that I've heard a lot throughout the tour here today is redundancy. Yes, yeah, redundancy is key because, again, we're dealing with cattle. Um, we've got to make sure that there's food in front of them, there's water in front of them at all times. Um, so, yeah, having that redundancy at the mill, having the capacity to feed the 200,000 head of cattle and do it day in, day out, no matter what conditions we're faced with, whether that's equipment breakdowns or, or uh, adverse condition, weather conditions, uh, we've got to make sure we've got feed out the gate. So that's why we've got redundancy throughout the mill um, to make sure that... Uh, Rain or shine, there's always feed in front of those cattle. So, And the other thing that's really interesting about this yard, and you can see it because some of it's still under construction, is the, the rolled concrete. And, and talk about how being on that hard surface does provide some advantages. Yeah, so just from an operations uh, standpoint, I mean, cleaning those pens, yeah, we have to do it more frequently, but we're in and out. We don't have to go back in. Uh, add any more clay back in to make it more of a smooth surface. Also, whenever we get um, rain, you don't have a puddle that's taking up half of your pen. Every square inch is usable space. Um, there's also a lot of other uh, advantages. The cattle convert better. They're not having to use energy to go through a bunch of slop. Um, but also, I don't know if you can tell, there's, there's not a whole lot of smell, not, not compared to a conventional feed right. yard that you would typically see with 73,000 head, and that's because we are able to clean that manure out. Uh, you don't have anything lingering around from turn after turn after turn. All the manure is scraped out. Um, it's, it helps with the flies because you don't have manure that just stays in the area and gets mixed in with the clays. Uh, so there is a, there's a yeah. lot of advantages. Yeah, and, and the, the slope of the pens on that rolled concrete is just perfect. goes into those drainage uh, canals, is that what you call them? Yep. And uh, it, it's been raining here all day, and those cattle are still very dry. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, the slope is perfect where the, the manure, the solids stay in the pen, so then we can take that out with the loader. And then all the water goes into the pond, and and uh, it's it's beautiful whenever it works. You just see, yeah. <laughs> you get that rain event, and you know, hey, we're going to be fine in two days. Give me a couple of days of of uh, sunshine, and it's going to be dry conditions again. Now, long term, there is a plan for a biodigester on site as well. Yes. Yep. We will be harvesting that manure and be using a. Uh, uh, anaerobic digestion to create renewable natural gas. Yeah, so the underpinning of all of this, no members of the ownership group for you know quite some time, data and the research component and understanding how the cattle are performing and being able to make decisions based on that data is just, is a really found, is a real foundation of black shirt. Yes, oh yeah, absolutely. Just figuring out what are we doing today? How can we be better tomorrow? And that's, that's really the key. 
um, not only from, you know, profitability, but just animal health, welfare. I mean, and also whenever you do that, you get all your employees bought in. Um, it just makes it a fun environment to work around, it, trying to figure out, hey, let's do the next best thing. Let's get better. Let's get better. Um, and data allows us to do that. Yeah, you know, we were talking in the truck and having some fun with the fact that, you know, a lot of people would maybe stop here, didn't have a background in the cattle feeding industry, and they'd think, oh, it's just feeding animals, whatever. You know, you know, hey, food production, this is great. I love steak. Fantastic. But there is a real science to what is happening behind us here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is uh, a lot more than just, yeah, give cattle some food, wait till they get big. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, remarkable and, and a lot more than I thought initially, yeah. being relatively new to the industry. Yeah, there's a lot of science, a lot of data uh, that can really push the needle and, and gain that efficiency um, just based off of that data. Yeah, and even down to, you know, making sure the feed truck is getting the right the right load or right ration for any and it, you know and having gps to tell them where to go and uh the truck won't unload without like just that that kind of the protections in place as well through the use of technology it was something that really stuck out to me oh yeah yeah because uh if you get that wrong it could be catastrophic because not only are you not getting the the efficiencies if you don't feed the correct uh ration but if you go backwards and you feed a too high of a protein diet to a small animal um yeah. It, it, yeah, it can not be good. So we've got all those protections in place to make sure that those errors do not occur. Yeah, and you know, what's also a little bit interesting here is there's obviously a, a whole lot of technology that's being utilized here. We talked about some of the data. But there's also a real people aspect too. Where there's uh, you were now you were employee number one on site here. Yes. But there's also a big team around you. Even adding uh, the the people components a big part of what's happening here at Blackshirt. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the crew that we've got is absolutely fantastic. I, I. Uh, have to think about it every single day and say hey how did we get so lucky just because the crew here is phenomenal and and i would say that uh we're not your typical feed yard crew uh we've got people from all different walks of life all different kinds of experiences i'd much rather you know take somebody who's who's interested willing to learn willing to uh you know really buy in and say hey we're going to be the best feed yard in the country um and everyone takes their experiences and say hey what's how can we do this better well i've got this experience not even from another feed yard but I mean, our maintenance manager, he came from the window manufacturing business, and he's got, he's got ideas all the time about how we could do something a little bit better. Um, but yeah, the employees here are absolutely fantastic. We've gotten very lucky. We got our core group very early on, and ever since then, I would say 80% of our employees have been referrals, um, which is just fantastic to see. That means that they enjoy what they're doing here. Um, they're really bought in, and they are asking their friends and their family, hey, come and work with me out here. It's got to be a big uh, economic story for, you know, smaller towns like Hagler to, you know, when you, we're talking about a 200,000 head feed yard in, in the community, there's a lot of economic benefit as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, hotels are full. The restaurants are always busy. Um, grocery stores, gas stations, everyone sees that, that boost. And, I mean, just in Ray... Um, we've worked with a local developer and we've we've put up 30 new homes and we've got plans to do more just because housing uh, we need to have housing for these employees and so those types of things it, it's just a domino effect I mean there's things that yeah it's directly affiliated with the feed yard but then these people are bringing families and their kids and so it, it affects the schools and there's going to be new businesses and and everything else that's brought into these areas and it's really exciting to yeah. see because without that Unfortunately, our small towns are dying, and yeah. so being able to revitalize with something like this uh, is very, it, it makes me happy to be a part of. Now, some of our audience is probably like, ah, Hagler, they're, they're, they're putting in Google Maps right now trying to figure out where the heck we are. Um, it is rather remote, but they're, you know, I guess, why here? What, 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 why, why the plan to build right here? Uh, so we're right in the heart of corn country, so there's a lot of feed that's readily accessible um, to us. But then also whenever it comes time to market the cattle, um, we've got options as far as where we can market those cattle. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 you just look at every single aspect, precipitation, the climate, um, this is this is the perfect spot to have a feed yard. Yeah, and and, and obviously haven't had any trouble accessing employees either, as you mentioned. You're you know, that's that that's worked out well. Yes, yeah. Surprisingly, uh, it has not been too difficult to uh, build our workforce, which yeah. is uh, I'm very happy for because I initially that was my biggest worry was hey you know I know that we're we're building it you better get ready you need to find those employees and and not only have we found the employees we found the right employees. 
So Trevor, can you give us an example of, of the USIC technology and data and how it's leading to making some better decisions in the future? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we use technology and data all, all throughout the site. Um, one of the, the most important to us is obviously the welfare of the cattle. And so we are always have a computer uh, shoot side, whether that's out in the back of the pens where we do our treatments or if it's in our processing facility when we're doing a scheduled uh, process to get, capture uh, updated weights. Um, We've got, we've got vehicles that actually capture Wi-Fi uh, signal that's broadcast from each facility, and we're able to upload all of our information, the weight of the animals, the temperature of the animals, the condition of the animals. We're able to upload all of that into our system, and we've got a group of veterinarians um, that are working remotely able to look at that information in real time and help us make decisions on is there any further um, evaluation that needs to take place? Do we need to do anything with these animals before we rehome them? Um, so that's just one example of, hey, real-time data that we've got qualified veterinarians looking at each one of these animals to make sure we don't miss anything. Yeah.